Shalom, Samantha. Shalom. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Samantha has willingly agreed to do、um, an interview, a testimony.、Um, she's had four hours of the Unlocking Destinies, Releasing the River, New Sound, and New Dance, creative, moving, utilizing the voice as a powerful. Instrument of praise, making it a powerful weapon of warfare. So, Samantha, we're just going to jump in, okay? We're going to start from the floor work. What was it like for you to be told you could make as much sound as you want, to just let your body feel like an overcooked pot of spaghetti and sound and breathe and yawn and let all the tension out?、Um, well, I'm, I'm not used to definitely being on the floor, moving around, and.、Um, Yeah, I'm also not used to being free in my body, which is part of the reason I took this class, anyways.、Um, so it was very, it was, a, it was a push for me because I'm not、uh, used to using my body or paying attention to my body, and also making sounds at the same time is a little intense. Indeed,、yes. indeed, <laughs> indeed. And each week you came, I said, we're going to go deeper with the sound. And we've got to get to this breaking point where we're using our sound from the depths of who we are. I say from a kishkas, which is a Yiddish word, from the depths of us. And at that point, we're really speaking with authority and we're dancing on the head of our enemy rather than him dancing on us. Because every culture we've been taught, shh. Sit down, shut up, you have nothing of value to say. And we need to get over that, right?、Yes. So, dancing is not the most challenging thing, it's lifting up your voice. What was it like for you to come, become aware of all those body parts, as we say, 25 body parts? What was that like for you to experiment initiating movement from all different parts of your body? Well, for me, dancing is way outside my comfort zone.、I'm Very shy and self conscious normally, and the reason that I'm doing this dance watch is because I need to get out of that.、Yeah. And so、um, I don't pay attention to my body parts. I don't like to dance in front of people. I don't, I don't really feel free. I, I don't enjoy dancing in front of people.、Uh, and so I did this because I believe that God was going to. Release me from some of these things and help me to be more free.、Mm-hmm. I do sing, and、mm-hmm. so I'm used to releasing my voice, but、right. not in correlation with my body. And so the, the 25 body parts, like using them and just, u- just using the 25 body parts in a dance and trying to pay attention to the levels and the The, the rate of the song, whether you're doing adagio or staccato or syncopation, like、right. with, including all those body parts、right. and the levels、right. and the sound, it's right. like, w o a Yeah, so it's, we, it's the potatoes, we call it the ingredients, the dynamics of dance, high, low, short, troll, medium, small. It's all the juxtaposition and all the elements of the dance that make it exciting to do and to watch. And so we liken it to like the potatoes. Like I say, imagine your vertebrae from your coccyx, your tailbone up all the way to your neck.、Um, and so you imagine all those vertebrae as a, each one being like a moving idea. And I call them take your potatoes, your bag of potatoes of moving ideas. So, what was it like for you to roll around the room with movements that's very peaceful and、um, breathy? And then add your own movements to those and to learn how to move fluidly, effortlessly, breathing and moving, breathing and moving. What was it like for you? How did that feel for you? I actually think that when I'm in the middle of it, the breathing part, like I'm not pay, paying attention to my breathing. Like I have to be reminded、yeah. to breathe. And、yeah. so the sounds don't come out naturally because if I'm not paying attention to my breathing, like it's not, the sounds aren't coming out when they're supposed to. But,、um, I don't do that. I never do that. I never roll around a room on a floor ever. ever. Right. I don't. Right. Do it. What was it like? <laughs> What was it like? I get you. I mean, it's, it did kind of like bring me back to childhood.、Good. And actually, like, I had abuse happen, which caused me maybe not to continue in my childhood. So it was like 
taking me back to my childhood okay, in okay. many ways and causing a like, trigger like triggers you mean like triggering feelings or triggering memories or or no like just what it would be like to be a normal child ah okay okay and I get it to you know to to just be free to do yes, that amen Not, yeah I hear you I hear yeah. you um, we're going to move to moving the telling, which is the voice inspires the movement and the movement inspires the voice. And we worked with scripture, we worked with devotional, we worked with just themes like my favorite day, my favorite place, just to get you to focus on a theme and use all of your ingredients of dance simultaneously. How was that for you? How did you like that? No, it was actually, it was more fun the second time than the first time. Yes. Yeah. The first time I was learning, yes, like all these body parts and all these levels, like you know, you have to get up and down and use muscles and yeah. all these things that you don't think of using right. normally. And right. so the first time, just getting used to using them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a press. <laughs> what did you notice? From your first class last week, which is two hours, and today was two hours, what did you notice um, from the first class that I mean, you honestly, saw in your life? You uh, know, that you were sharing with me about how you were able to use it in your life. Yeah, so um, I actually, I mean, Leora shows you how to use body parts that you don't normally use, and, and so I, I'm a worship leader, and when I'm singing, like, the Holy Spirit moves me, but this... Since the, the first dance, I started being more aware of my movements and then just dancing more while I'm worshiping. That's because, wonderful. Because honestly, the movement for me comes out through worship, through singing. Yes. So when I'm singing, I'm moving. Sometimes I'm not aware, but now I'm trying to be more aware. Maybe like the Lord wants to do something intercession more intercession yes. and I, I feel like there's a place where we could come to to be more mindful mm -hmm. of what he's doing through mm -hmm. our dance mm -hmm. so I do believe that dancing is really intercession Amen. and we could probably go to a much more powerful place yes. Yes. if we are mindful mm -hmm. and uh, asking him like what is he doing through this and Amen. so you found more freedom from one class to the next in yes. your life you and I found definitely more freedom in this class than I did in the last class. Amen. So that was so last week, the first class was we're building on the foundation. Yeah. Because you're getting freer. It sounds to me like you're getting freer so that you can jump in more. You've given yourself more permission, greater permission, you know. And um, have you noticed anything? You may or may not notice, but but I realize that as we sound deep from our kishkas, we are letting out a lot of trauma. We're letting out a lot of trauma. Have you? Did you notice feeling any different this week from using your voice, hmm. like an adagio staccato and syncopation? Like ah, ha, 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 ha. you know how you use that when you release your sound. Did you notice any difference? Hmm. It's okay if you didn't. Um, it's just that we do hold a lot of trauma in our body, and I think you're going to see more of a freedom in your life because you've given yourself permission to be as a child. What's it like coming as a child to the dance? How did you like that? I mean, it's it's certainly better to come as a child uh -huh. than as an adult because, I mean, when Leora puts on here, use these body parts, do it in this, like, you know, you have to think of the body parts, the timing, the voice, and the, the levels. It's like all at once. Like, I'm not used to that. I'm yeah. trying to think through yeah. it but if you just come in as a little child it's much right easier. because you're not getting into your mind see that's the thing we have these wonderful minds and there's a place for these minds but we want to dance from our spirit we want to dance from our head and our head can truly be a stumbling block and so these are all moving ideas you don't have to do them all at the same time but it's <laughs> like bringing your bag of potatoes you know how did you like dancing to the artwork of Patricia Salveson these are panels these are prints of her painting, the one and only Jerusalem Wall of Life at the Alliance Cemetery Park. How did you like working with looking, looking at a panel, taking in the picture, and then having to interpret it, projecting your voice from your kishkas from the depths of you with, with movement? 
How did you like that? What was that like for you? We did that today. I mean, it was it was good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I may have gone way outside the boundaries of the picture. No, there is no boundaries. That's the thing. <laughs> okay. That's the thing. The, you, you can't go wrong. This whole work is to inspire you to be free. Because when we die to the fear of our neighbor, we're in a better position to obey Elohim. When he says go, we go, go, and we don't keep him waiting, having to check and see what Bobby and Susie sitting on our shoulder think. Right? So this work, it prepares us for the prophetic. What did you think about the prayer dances? Laying on the floor and receiving um, with the music of Ruth Fazel, with each color came a word for your life. How was that for you to be in Shabbat rest and receive that? Mm, that was nice. Yeah, I also liked the pre-prayer dance. Yes, the pre-prayer dance. We did together because <clears throat> I certainly felt like like Leora sat and, and I she told me a couple things and to do a dance as the Lord gives it to me for those two specific fruits of the Spirit. Right, and, right. And I really do feel like the Lord gave me the sound and the dance for her Amen. specifically. Amen. And so, it was wonderful. Yeah. So, it was wonderful. Yeah. Um, first, Samantha received, and she had two fruits of the Spirit, which I believe was shalom and righteousness. And so uh, the task at hand was I had her close her eyes and just receive, and I would ask the Lord, what does the word righteousness look like in sound and movement? Because it's one of a kind. If it was somebody else, it would be a different dance and song. So I released that over her, and after each one, she would just say, I receive. And it's a blessing from the Lord. I don't know what she needs, but God knows. And then she danced over me uh, the words um, love. And that was beautiful. And it made me so joyful. It activated my spirit. And then um, long suffering. <laughs> and so she, she sang some other things and did movement over me. But then she broke through the long suffering into joy. And that was wonderful. Because the law, at the end of the long suffering, yes. Um, yes, it's victory, that's right, right, we need to persevere, and so any of these dances could go on for days, because they're prophetic dances, yeah, so I'm just asking the Lord, um, okay, so what else did we do, we did a lot of, we learned how to uh, simultaneously move our body, and allow the sound to inspire the movement, so how many sides of the room do we have? Four. And what's the technique that I use for the class? Call and response. Very good. And LSD, did we work with LSD together? Listen. Yes. Yes, you got it. Listen something. See. See, do. That's right. So we listen, we see, and we do. So as a prophetic dancer, we want to dance honestly and truthfully before God. And so we can't be moving every moment, right? So we have the element of pausing. And when we have a conviction and an intention and a focus, when we pause, if we believe what we're doing, other people will believe what we're doing, right? And we have the element of surprise, yeah? And so, uh, Samantha, I'm really proud of you. Did, you did an amazing, amazing job. And Samantha jumped in because it's an investment that you make. So you want to get the most out of it, yeah. Is there anything, Samantha, you'd like to say to the listening audience about stepping out into uncharted waters with the prophetic dance with the new song. Is there anything you want to say um, from your own experience, and not only from today, but other times that we've danced together in the past? Samantha and I met many years ago. Is there anything you want to share, encourage people with? I mean, for me specifically as a trauma survivor, the the dance has really, really, really like bro broken through a lot of the, the 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 things that happened to me, the trauma, the dance has broken through the trauma that I that I have still been suffering with, and I've received a lot of freedom and Thanks joy God. through Thanks the God. dance. Um, it's way way outside my comfort zone, though, so I have to really press in. But I know because of my journey with the Lord and prophetic words about dance before I came to Jerusalem and the way that. Leora and I met and how he's broken through like Amen. each time that I stepped into Amen. dancing Amen. like he's he, he, I used to be so self-conscious as a worship leader like I wasn't free even to worship 
the way that he has called me to worship, but through the dance, yeah. like I've really healed from a lot of trauma, and That's also funny. I've I'm now able to lead worship freely without being self-conscious. That's wonderful. Um, and even dance a little while I'm leading worship. Praise and God. Hallelujah. So also I do believe that, um, you know, when, I, when I'm dancing alone with Yeshua, like it is a form of intercession and it's really a strong and powerful form of intercession. And so I really encourage people to do that also alone because Amen. I, I find when I'm alone I feel his presence a lot more than Amen. when I'm trying to think of all these other things. When I'm alone with him, I'm just engaged with him and just doing yes. I'm moving how I feel yes. like being led Amen. to move. Amen. And then I can pay more attention to him. But during this class it's like you're trying to pay attention to all these body parts and all these you know, the set left. The, the volume of your voice, the levels, the, the speed, the, all these things. So uh, I think that when I do take what I've learned here into your my private time, private time, it's going to be very enhance it, yes, enrich it, yes. Very much, yes, yes. And you know, ironically, this past weekend, I kept seeing your face, um, and you were ministering to people through the song and the dance several times I have seen this. So I do believe this is a part. This is a part of him releasing you into that. And I'm really edified to hear that you're feeling looser and less self-conscious as a worship leader. That is absolutely wonderful. Um, and of course, using your voice was the most uncomfortable in the sense of having to talk about whatever came to you, right? Like spontaneously. Like when we were doing the moving the telling and I was throwing out themes to you. Sometimes you don't, because as adults, we normally want to go into our adult brain. But if we think about, okay, I'm just going to like speak what's right there. Whether yeah. it's about chocolate or whether it's about I love Jerusalem or whether it's about this dance class. When people see other people able to be a child, it inspires them because they... They want to be able to be a child also because a child doesn't take any care, any thought, self-consciousness. They don't care about what their neighbor thinks. And that's why we need to come to that place in order to embrace to the fullness the two innate worship gifts, the voice and the body in motion. And when we die to the fear of man, shackles fall away and we can move forward into everything God has for us. And that's my passion, destiny. Yeah, well, I think being delivered from the fear of man is a very important thing in this yes. generation. Yes, and amen. I do have to say that dancing with Leora has broken for me through wow. a lot of That's the God. fear of man. I Praise still have God. a ways to go, but it's, Hallelujah. it's been very powerful. Praise God. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we want to bless you. We're at the Tabernacle of David Prophetic Dance Center, the one and only worship dance center in this nation in the body of Messiah with professional woods from floor to protect our bodies so we can dance and dance and dance till he takes us home. So I want to bless you with the ironic benediction. We're going to say it in English. I just want to bless you. And those of you who are watching this, please extend your hand and bless Samantha. Thank you, Lord. Samantha, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, b'shem Yeshua m'shechenu, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. And thank you for agreeing to share your experience. And we pray that you are blessed and that those who watch will be blessed and will be thoughtful about stepping out and becoming bolder in their walk and dance with Elohim. God bless you. Anything else you want to say? I mean, I, I really think that we need to be bold as lions in uh, doing whatever it is that God has called each one of us to do, and this this certainly helps. So, bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Shalom and peace and 